co-creators. It's Melissa from Melissa's Creations. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you are ready to have so much fun because I'm combining Rooted in Nature with the Wood Crate Framelits dies to make this fantastic little goodie box. Now, I did not design this. I did case this almost exactly. There are a few slight differences, but I cased this from Nadine's Stampin' Club, and I hope I pronounce this right. I believe it's a blog in German. The Holzkiste Aufgehübst, I think. <laughs> and for those G German demonstrators out there, please let me know if, I, if I'm doing okay. I really don't want to butcher it too badly. Um, so she, I saw this on Pinterest. That's the site that it took me to. And I believe from the translated website, it said that she found it from Sabine's Creative, Creative Eka uh, by Sabine Mayer. So anyway, that's where this originated. And I loved it so much. I really wanted to recreate it. So I used the Rooted in Nature, uh, which is what they used as well. And so I have a little piece of Velcro to adhere my box shut. But when you open it up, it has the wood crate inside and a fun little message. So our stamp set says, be strong, be happy, be you. And down here I stamped, you are wonderful. And then you open that up and you have a little space that you can write your own sentiment or your own little message to the recipient. And then it has the wood crate framelit on it. Isn't that amazing? I just really thought that was super fun. So here's the back side. So you can see that fun embellishment on our closure here. And I went ahead and I stamped all of these. Um, I made my own DSP and stamped those. And I did mess up on this one a little bit. You can kind of see some dimensional um, excess right there. So I kind of needed to figure out how I wanted to do my closure and now I have a pretty good idea. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and make this today. I'm really excited to get started. I hope you are too. Let's dive right in. So we are using the Rooted in Nature bundle. This is new in the annual catalog and it is so amazing. If you haven't taken a look at it yet, go right now, flip through that catalog, find it because it's gorgeous. Not only do you get the red rubber clear mount stamps, um, I believe is it might be offered in wood as well. I'll put, um, I'll put it on the screen so that you can see that. But we've got two stamp cases here with beautiful trees, leaves, other little accents. And then of course it has these awesome sayings. And I just love this font. This font is like totally worth the stamp set. I love it. So that's the stamps. You can also get the coordinating thinlets dies and when you purchase the dies with the stamps you do save 10% when you get that bundle. So make sure that you look for that. However the Nature's Roots Framelits dies really gorgeous. We are going to be using this little guy right here to cut out our embellishment for the front of our little crate closure. And then a classic favorite wood crate framelit dies. Now this does coordinate with the stamp set wood words. So we've got the star, the chicken, the crescent moon, and the heart, and the little tag shape here that coordinates with that stamp set. But we're just going to use the crate die today. So we've got that. Now, this does take a lot of paper, a lot of cardstock, lots of different sizes. So I'm not going to tell you every single size in this video. If you wanna find the list of sizes, you can head over to melissascreations.com and there you will be able to find the list of the materials that I used along with the sizes for everything. There's just so many pieces. I, I, it would take a long time for me to edit this. It would take a long time for you to pause and stop and start. So I just wanted to put it conveniently in one place for you guys. So I'm just gonna dive right in. I am gonna tell you that I used very vanilla, old olive, and early espresso. So those are the colors that I used on this, that I will be using on this. This was done with the fresh fig, the powder pink, um, and I believe those are the only two colors. So I'm gonna kinda recreate it with those colors here. 
we need to cut out our crate. So I'm gonna do that first, and I'm going to be cutting my crate out of the early espresso cardstock. So let's bring in the big shot. And here we go. I have my magnetic platform on here right now, and I have my two cutting plates. So the sandwich is magnetic platform, a cutting plate, your cardstock, and this is just a, a half sheet of cardstock, so it's the same size as a standard card base, five and a half by eight and a half. So I'm gonna grab the framelit here, and you're gonna need two of these to make one crate. So I'm gonna, how did I wanna put this on there that way? No, I'm gonna put it on this way. And we're gonna run that through twice so that we can get two different cutouts. All right, so I have lots and lots of pieces here. Now, hopefully I can remember where all of these go, but I'm just gonna kind of lay them out so you can kind of And then I have some extras to stamp on and get my embellishment all cut and decorated and, and all that good stuff. And then this is the piece that's going to actually wrap around the crate. And so we're going to be doing some score marks on here so that we can get that wrapped around the crate. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to set my crate pieces aside and we're going to stamp on all of this lovely stuff right here first. So I'm going to, first of all, stamp my sentiment and my little um, extra guy, this little branch here. So I'm gonna get that branch out and then we're going to use Just For You. So I'm gonna get that out as well. So I'm gonna stamp a couple of the front pieces in the Old Olive and my words in Old Olive as well. So I'm gonna ink that stamp up. I'm gonna do two in Old Olive, and then one in the Early Espresso. Okay, while I have my Old Olive out, I'm also going to stamp my sentiment, and I am going to punch this out using one of my circle punches. So I'm just gonna put it kind of in the middle of those two branches up from the bottom a little bit so I can center it on my on my piece. I am going to use that again, but I'm gonna finish this up first. Take my early espresso, okay? And this is um, the old style classic Stampin' Pad, and I have had it for a little while, so I'm trying to get as much of that ink on there as I can. And then we're gonna stamp that guy down. And he's super light. This, I don't have an ink refill, and this is a little, um, it needs to be a little bit more juicy. So I don't know if I necessarily like that. So I'm going to actually stamp it in soft suede because I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a lot better and a lot darker. So I'm gonna turn it over, but I'm still gonna stamp on this side because I wanna make sure that I don't cut out what I'm gonna be stamping when I cut my opposite side of my paper. So I'm gonna stamp this all the way over here. Much better, yes. So we're gonna use that for our DSP as well. So we're changing it up from soft suede to soft suede from the early espresso. I'm gonna set this aside so that I can cut that out in a minute. And then the other pieces that we need to do our DSP, we're going to use the small leaf right here. So I'm gonna get that out. Okay, so now we're going to stamp our DSP. And I mean, this part is kind of relaxing. It's really nice. I enjoy this part. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of line everything up. So I'm gonna open this again and lay it out so I kind of have an idea of what goes where. I'm gonna bring in some scratch paper and then I'm just going to kind of lay all the pieces that I'm going to stamp on first, kind of next to each other, just like that. So we're stamping these outer pieces first, and I need the little piece as well, okay? So we've got the little flat piece, we have these two panels, and then we have the two panels on the end here. So I'm going to use my soft suede to stamp my branches, 
And I want this to be kind of light. So what I'm gonna do is stamp off before I stamp on my cardstock. And I'm just gonna do kind of like random patterns. And I do like to have them overlap each other. Now it doesn't matter how much they overlap because they're not necessarily going to be next to each other. They could be, and that might be a really pretty look, but that's not necessarily what I'm going for. So I'm just kind of stamping randomly around the outside edges here. And then I'm gonna go back in and maybe touch up a couple and just add a few more in the middle. So I'm going to use my old olive and do the leaves. So we're gonna bring that leaf in and I'm gonna do this one in full ink. So again, I'm just gonna kind of line them up a little bit. And they don't have to be perfectly lined up. I just wanna be able to stamp across multiples at once. So then we're gonna stamp there. And then I'm twisting my stamp as I'm going so that they're not all in the same direction. Put that there. I'm gonna put one going across those two down there. And kind of one there. So this is where you can really get, you know, pretty creative. There we go. And that's mostly gonna get covered up anyway with our little sentiment guy. Okay, so that's the outside done. So now we're going to stamp the inside. Now on the inside, I have two panels that are the same. And then I have these two panels that I'm gonna stamp that tree ring. And then I'm gonna use some scratch paper to stamp out these sentiments here. So we're going to bring these four panels in. Now again, two of them are going to be with the tree ring. So I'm just gonna do these two. I just want this stamp in both colors around the outside. That's green, let me do brown first. I'm gonna do my soft suede first. So I just wanna put it around the outside edge because I want to leave room to write a sentiment. And I'm doing this one in full ink because I'm gonna put it on the inside and I kinda want it a little bit darker. I just smeared that a little bit. So be careful when you're stamping yours, but it's okay, it's pretty much getting covered up, so I'm not really too worried about that. And we'll do this one. And then also make sure that you leave room for your green leaves. I'm not leaving very much room, but we're gonna make it work. So there we go, okay. So now I'm gonna clean this off a little bit and I'm gonna use my green. So those are done. I'm gonna carefully put those aside. Hopefully I don't get too much more ink on there. All right, so now we're going to do our tree ring. So to do that, I'm gonna put these together. I'm going to get my tree ring out. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just love this set. So there's the tree ring. And I'm also going to need, oh, uh, maybe I'll do the bigger block. I'm also going to need this sentiment here. And we're going to cut that apart. So I'm gonna bring in a scratch piece of paper to stamp my sentiment. And this tree ring, I'm going to do in soft suede. And then I'm gonna do my words in old olive. Okay, so it doesn't have to be exact, but I am gonna put them next to each other. And then I'm going to stamp it kind of off the edge to the right. Beautiful, love it. All right, so now I'm gonna stamp with Old Olive those words. Yay. Okay, put the ink away and then we're going to fussy cut these words and then we'll be ready to start assembling. So I have my paper snips here and what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up the side and there is a little border so I'm leaving a tiny bit of space past each of those rectangles. And I cut three in two places. I cut there or three places. There, there, and there, right on the edges here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna go all the way up first, leaving a little bit of room so that we have a nice vanilla border. Okay, so there's all three. Now I'm going to trim off this. 
Okay, there's one. Now I'm gonna cut right in the middle of these two pieces. So there's the first saying. Oops. And now I can cut the rest. That's a really quick way to cut out the rectangles. Really like using that method to cut these out because it's real quick. You don't have to spend a lot of time doing each one individually. Okay, so there's that. So I have all of my pieces except for my embellishment. We'll do that at the end. And we're going to bring in our crate. So, First of all, you want to score your crate lines. And I like to use the tear and tape because it's super duper strong and it's quick to use. So I'm just going to put some tear and tape on these flaps here. And literally, you just stick it on and tear it off. It's great on this one as well and I'm okay if it's um, if the tape goes over a little bit because you can just fold it in on itself and, and there's not a lot of extra adhesive so just rub that in and then you're just going to pick it off all right so to put these together so it, it goes like this right so the first thing I'm gonna do is adhere this panel like that okay and then I'm going to bring this side up and adhere it to the side of this part so now we have half of a crate now I'm gonna swing this around and do the same thing it's gonna be a little trickier because it's put together now, but I'm just going to adhere the bottom crate piece, and then we're going to bring the side piece on, and like that. So there's our crate. Now, I it does stick out kind of like that, so what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of our multi-purpose liquid glue, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit in there. Now you could use snail on the very corner of this too, and that would work just fine. But I'm just gonna kinda run a little bit of um, liquid glue in there. And then I'm going to hold it in place just for a little bit until it dries and sticks together. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside, but I am going to put a block in there just to kind of hold it down and make sure that it's gonna keep its shape for me. While that is drying, we're going to adhere these little words to this guy. So I want be strong to be on top, and then we're going to do be happy, and then be you down here, like that. So to adhere those, I'm just gonna use some glue dots. All right, so to do the outer flap portion, I have this piece here and it is three and three eighths inch wide. And you just need a piece long enough to get all of your scores in. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just start with these two marks here because what I wanna do is fold this around my crate to make sure I have a nice, good, snug fit. And because these piece, this piece here folds onto itself, I know that that's a safe place to start. So I want my first mark, I'm gonna do my first score line at this measurement and my second score line at that measurement. And those measurements are, so this score line is one and three quarter inches. And then we're going to do this next score line here just over one and three quarter so that we have enough room for our flap to close here and not run into our crate. So we're going to start at the edge and score at one and three quarter. I'm just going to use my stamp and trimmer to do that because as you know, there's a cutting blade and a scoring blade. So I'm gonna get my cutting blade out of the way and I'm going to score this first at one and three quarters. 
And then I'm gonna measure this line that I just scored, and I'm gonna go just one or two ticks. So one or two ticks above the one and three quarter. So I'm lining my score line up here with, it's, it's about one and seven eighths. So we're gonna line that up with one and seven eighths, and we're gonna score that. And that's the only scoring that I'm going to measure, okay? So we're going to fold those two over. We're gonna crease those. And I do have a corner rounder punch. This was a Project Life um, corner rounder, but I believe there's um, a corner rounder on the envelope punch board. Uh, and there's a couple of other tools that you can use to round your corners. Okay. So now we have the start to that, and you can see that it folds over and there's the same amount of space here, okay? So the next step is we're going to take our crate and I'm just going to line that up right on that score line, just so that there's enough room for it to fold up. So now that I have my placement, what I'm going to do is take a stylus and on the take your pick tool, it comes with the stylus attachment. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to lock that one in and actually I want the smaller side out. So I'm gonna lock that in place. I'm gonna turn this around so that, because I'm right-handed. So I'm going to put this crate right on the edge of that score line so it still folds up. And I'm just going to put a little score line there. So you can see I manually scored that. Now if you want to go back over with your Stampin' Trimmer and give that a straighter score, that's totally fine. I'm just going to fold it over like this on that score line and use my bone folder to crease it. Okay, so there's that. So I know that's where my crate goes. This gets folded in like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it all together, lay it flat, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, the, the sides of your crate is going to be taller than the flat part of your crate. So let me see if I can show you. This edge, this end of your crate, it's taller. It's taller right here than it is right here. So I'm measuring this height right there. So when I have this down like this, I'm putting some small tick marks with my stylus right at the top of that, right here. Hopefully you can see that okay. So I'm just gonna mark a little spot right there and right there, and then I'm gonna take a ruler, or again, you can get your stamp and trimmer back out and do it that way, but I'm just gonna line up those edges, those little tiny marks that I made with my stylus, and then I'm just going to score that again, okay? So now I can fold that over and see how it's off a little bit. I can just tweak it a little bit to make it in line and use my bone folder to get a nice straighter edge. There we go. Okay. So again, we're going to just wrap it all up like a little present. Okay. And now we're going to do the final score line. So now that it's all down, it's all snug. This is a straight edge here, so I'm just gonna take my stylus and run that right there. And I know that's where my end is, so I'm gonna fold that over, and I'm gonna try and make sure that my, my edges line up. It's just a hair off, so I'm just gonna scoot that over a little bit, a little tiny bit, hold that down, and then take my bone folder and reinforce that. Now I'm going to round these edges as well. So we're going to put that in our rounder, just like that. Okay, so there is our base. Now before I adhere, now if you if you aren't sure where your crate goes, I suggest as you're as you're moving along to take a pen and just kind of put a little X where your crate is gonna go. Just so that when you're adhering your DSP down, you know where it needs to be stuck. Okay, so we're gonna start adhering that DSP. Now I'm taking my two decorative pieces that I'm able to write my sentiments on, and those are going to go, let me flip this around, 
So I have my flap, my small flap where my embellishment is gonna go is on the left now. So that's this piece right here, okay? So now my crate goes here, just like this, okay? I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to adhere them down here. Now, I made my pieces smaller than the original. So on this, my pieces were a lot larger and they went just so there's about a 16th of an inch difference um, around or border around. So I'm going to adhere these pieces right here and I do have to round these corners. So we're gonna do that. I'm just rounding two. And I'm going to adhere those with snail. That should do the job nicely. And then on these, we have our pieces that we stamped with the wood circle and our words. So those go right here. Okay, now before I adhere that, it's easier to adhere everything flat, so I'm just going to turn this over. Um, one thing I, I didn't do is stamp that piece. So let's get another piece out here, and then I'm also going to round those corners, and then I'm going to stamp it. All right, so for this, we're going to use the sentiment, you are wonderful. And I love that sentiment. It's so pretty. And I just love the words. You are wonderful. Absolutely, you're wonderful. All right, so I'm gonna pick that up and I'm going to stamp that. Let me bring in my scratch paper again. And mind the direction. So the rounded edges are at the top. So that is how your sentiment is going to face that direction. Let's do the sentiment in Old Olive. that up. I'm going to stamp that down in the middle. Okay, and then we're going to do our leaves in the soft suede. And because this is going to show on the inside, I'm going to do this in a full soft suede ink. So now we're going to adhere all of those pieces. So again, we're going to, I'm just gonna kind of lay them all out. And we don't need one on the bottom. And then this little guy goes here. And again, we do need to round those corners. Okay, so now we get to glue in. All right, so now to adhere my crate to my base, I'm gonna bring back in my tear and tape because that is super strong and I wanna make sure that this doesn't go anywhere. So I'm just gonna put a couple strips on the bottom here. Okay, and then we're going to set him down right inside those score lines. Trying to make sure that everything lines up. Okay, there we go. So now, there's our sentiment. We wrap it up and look, yay, super cute. So now we just need our embellishment and we will be all done. All right, so I need my Nature's Roots framelits and I'm going to get this little guy out here. I also need a small circle punch. So I have my one inch circle punch here and I'm going to punch out my sentiment. So here I have the smallest stitched shapes framelits die right here and I'm going to cut that out in a contrasting color. So I'm gonna cut that out in the early espresso cardstock. All right, so I have my Big Shot out again, and with the magnetic platform, I'm going to put my early espresso scrap with my circle framelits, 
And then I'm going to put this on with that framelit. And we're just gonna cut those out. All right, so I'm going to take some snail and I'm just going to adhere my sentiment to that circle. And then on the back of that, I'm going to put some snail. Now for this part, I want to kind of get a placement. So I'm going to close up my little package and I'm going to hover this over where I want it to go and I want it to go right about there. Now, I don't want my leaves to stick too far outside the box. It's okay if they go up, but I don't want them to go down because then it won't sit flat. So I'm just going to stick those behind just enough so that they can kinda hang out there and not go off. See how I have that? That's not gonna go off the end there. Okay, so once I have those down on the back of that, I wanna make sure that they stay in place where they're supposed to go. So I'm going to take my one inch circle punch again and with a scrap of paper, I'm just gonna use very vanilla because that's what I've got right here. I'm just gonna cut one of those circles out and then I'm going to just adhere that to this side. So not only does it cover up the adhesive that I have there, but it also reinforces so that those really don't go anywhere. So now to attach this and get it all ready to go, I am going to pop this up with a dimensional on just this top portion here. So if I want this to sit right here, I'm just going to put a dimensional up here at the top so that it's only adhered to the top portion. I'm gonna grab a dimensional, and we're gonna put that right up here at the top. So it's at the top of my sentiment. So now I'm going to close this back up and now I can stick it down right there. So now it's only adhered to the top flap, okay? So now here's where the rest of the magic happens. I have some Velcro dots that I picked up from my local craft store, and these are the circles. So these are sticky, so all I have to do is peel that off, and I'm going to put that right on my flap here. And then I'm gonna peel the other one off just like this. And I'm gonna fold this back up and make sure everything's lined up. And then I'm just going to stick it right down like that. And that, I'm gonna hold it for just a second, but that's our closure. That's our super simple closure that allows us to open and close this box multiple times. So now carefully for the first time, I'm gonna take those apart and boom, there we go. There's our beautiful closure. And there is our beautiful box. What do you guys think? Isn't that just the cutest in the world? I really need to give a shout out again to Nadine and Sab Sabine. I hope I'm saying those right, um, for doing these super cute little boxes. These are adorable. And I am so excited to make a whole bunch of these for Thanksgiving and put little treats in them to put onto um, the place settings for my guests. Really excited about that. So there we go. There's the cute and adorable little crate box. Thank you so much for joining me today for this special video, doing a 3D project with the lovely Rooted in Nature bundle and the wood crate framelits dies. I really hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give the video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. You can follow me online at melissascreations.com and on Facebook at facebook.com slash mcreations. 
I'm also on social media. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest with the handle at mcreations. Thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed this fun project today, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.